Hey everyone, my name is James and welcome back to Chippy's Couch. So today, we're back for another round of the Modded Maid series. And would you know it, just a little bit of YouTuber luck has just kicked in already. Because I was about to start the episode by saying, Hey, we'll do a little bit of preparation for Skeletron. Because we haven't found the confused zombie. But here he is. He spawned in during the intro. What is going on? What is with my luck recently? So I was going to let the old intro die, not the Terraria Enthusiast one, but the one that reminds you to, hey, wash your hands. But I'm not going to let it die. I feel like it's important now than ever to give those little reminders. So make sure you're all being safe out there. Stay clean. Stay indoors. Watch Chippy's Couch, all right? That's basically what I'm getting at. Have you watched enough Chippy's Couch? Hopefully so. So yeah, we were finding the zombie in the last episode so that we could buy the Grim Pointer. Now, the Grim Pointer is going to allow us to find the little room that allows us to summon in Viscount. Viscount is the next boss on Boss Checklist, and it's a really cool vampire bat that's in the Thorium mods. It's a boss that I really, really like. But I'm actually going to be mixing today's episode up quite a bit, actually. So you may have noticed that over the past couple of episodes... I've not necessarily been dying all that often, and usually, you know, that's a great thing. It shows that I've put in a good amount of time with my weapons and my armors, and maybe I'm getting a little bit better at dodging, and I've got the right buffs, but I'm not too buffed up. But that being said, I know you guys love to see a bit of a challenge. As Caleb put it yesterday, it was my second non-death episode in a row. So that really shows that, you know what, we need to bump up the difficulty just a bit. So I'm actually going to be converting this series to a Revengeance Mode series. Now, I was always cautious to do this because we're rocking Calamity and Thorium. But as you guys have told me many a time, Revengeance Mode will actually take into account Thorium and it will buff Thorium bosses. So at first I thought, I don't know if I can really trust that because, you know relying on one mod to change another mod it's scary right you don't know if it's going to work out the way you want it to work out but i'm going to put a little bit of faith into it and it will give us something that we've never done before you know we've never done revengeance and thorium and i think it all sounds kind of exciting so to begin the episode what we're going to do is we're going to find that little arena and i'm also going to alter it so i'm going to make it larger so that my flaming water bolt will bounce around a little bit more but then after that, we'll um, we'll go change it to Revengeance mode, and then we'll do Skeletron. So I've stumbled across the Skeleton Merchant, and I see he's selling a brand new item. Now, I don't need this because, of course, we're playing a mage, but I remember seeing this on the patch notes for the latest Thorium update. So if you're like a huge Thorium fan, I'm going to show you it, right? I'm fairly certain this is what it was. It might not have been, right? Knowing me, this could have been added four years ago. And I didn't know. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw it. So let's have a little go with this. Oh, wait. <laughs> does it need bullets or does it fire out actual dart traps? It looks cool, though. If I remember, I'll uh, I'll show you guys it later. Because I have a million uh, bullets at home. So it's not like we can't do it. So it's been about 10 maybe even 15 minutes and i still haven't found this arena and i think it's the lowest arena that i've ever seen in this mod so look how low we are all right this is the uh that's the top of it right but look where we are we're so low underground it's actually kind of bonkers all right i'm gonna try and safely get there i want to make sure that it doesn't fill with lava that's super important right now i need to make sure that we have like maybe like an obsidian tunnel down into it but then we need to make sure that it isn't filled with water as well oh man the sacrifices we're about to make i tell you what let's oh god i can't stop vein miner i was like all right we need to stop vein miner because this is too much but i think we're all right let me grab a little bit of breath <gasps> oh it's nice to breathe am i right lads okay so do we let it get full i guess we can let it get full and then drain out the water in a minute. Well, actually, I do need to uh, to make the whole arena larger. So I think I'm just going to work on that. I do actually have a gills. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and dig around like this to just extend it just a little bit. 
I don't really know what's going to happen, but I think now that we're changing it to Revengeance mode, this is going to be so much harder. It really is. This is not going to be as easy as we once thought. Yesterday, when I was thinking about doing this boss fight, I thought, man, no real problem. It's going to be a breeze. No, it really isn't. <laughs> can I get through that gap? Oh, I can. Nice. So, as you can see, the arena is now complete. And I have to say, this is probably the most scuffed arena I've ever used in Shiraria. I don't have OCD or anything like it, but my mind is telling me to do this boss fight, you need to fill in this back wall. It's driving me mental looking at it. Because what I've done is I've actually taken away some of the edges because it clears up quite a lot of space, but it looks so bad and it's driving me mad, but we'll see. You may notice some more jump cuts with today's episode. You may have heard yesterday, but I'm starting to get a kind of sore throat. I was meant to edit out a chunk yesterday where I like cleared my throat and I grabbed a drink. And usually what I'll do is if I do that, I'll wait a couple of seconds so that when I'm editing it, I see the little gap of audio on the timeline and I go, ah, that's the chunk I need to remove that one right there. Forgot to do it yesterday. So there's like this extended pause in the previous episode and it sounds awful. It sounds like I'm dying. I'm not dying. I'm fine. It's a sore throat. Okay, so I went and got the item for Revengeance mode. The best part about Calamity is that you can make these for free. I guess it makes a lot of sense because not a lot of people want to do it. So you're signing yourself up for torture. So thank God it's free, really. Um, but yeah, let's get into this. So if you've never seen this before, I will do a brief summary because there are always new people here. Revengeance mode is like expert mode, expert mode. It changes a lot. You get a new meter called the rage meter that fills up once you get hurt and then you can use it and it gives you a temporary damage buff. You also have adrenaline and adrenaline is a meter that fills up as you're fighting bosses if you don't get hit. It fills up. You could then use the adrenaline to get a damage buff. It's pretty great. There's more enemies. Enemies drop more money. It nerfs your movement speed. It nerfs your life regeneration. It does a lot. Revengeance mode is now activated. I've not done revengeance mode in forever. And seeing these banners up here again. Oh, well, these meters. It makes me so nostalgic. I love it. All right. So buffed up. We'll get into this. Begin. So I spawned that in using some of the uh, shards that we got in the previous episode during the Blood Moon. I didn't really explain that yesterday, but uh, now you know. The only downside of using a mage weapon that fires around a small area with a boss like this is that it becomes increasingly hard to actually see what's going on with, um, with the boss, really. So hopefully the Fungal Clump doesn't absorb too much damage. And we can stay focused. I'm only using a very small amount of buffs, so um, so we've got to be careful. I actually forgot that this boss has its own abilities that will pounce off walls. So, uh, yeah. I think the bosses are trying to um, basically compensate against us. But it is going really well. The music is fantastic. I don't often note how good the music is, especially recently. I've been playing without headphones. I don't know why, but I find it to be um, oddly comforting. I think as well because I know the sounds of Terraria. I don't really need to worry all that much. So I think on the uh, the second attempt of this fight, we're going to have to change some things up. I think now that um, we've got Revengeance mode on, we're going to need uh, a few more buffs as well to try and uh, negate some of the downsides. The fight is going well. I tell you what, maybe I should be using this uh, staff because if it runs into it, it does uh, a very high amount of damage. Yeah, look at that. If you can get it when the boss is actually just, like, stationary, it's uh, it's pretty great. Okay, I'm going to give my uh, throat a little rest for a second. So enjoy the music, guys.
So for the final phase of this fight, we should be transformed into a bat any second. I don't exactly know. I thought it was uh, in the middle of the fight. I'm actually kind of... Oh, it's there. <laughs> Here it is. So during this phase, if you've never seen this boss before, you can't damage the boss. You've just got to fly around as a bat and, uh, and survive. And then you get to transform back into a human. And just like that, you beat Viscount in Revengeance mode. Hell yeah, boys. We still did it. I'm very proud of us. That's so cool. Now, I'm actually going to try and repurpose these uh, these doors that I got. Oh, they're five blocks. Ah, all right. So would this work then if I did this? Ah, it would. Yeah, they look really cool. I uh, I can't exactly remember how to craft these. I used these in the, uh, in the previous series, but I had to Google it. Oh, they look really good. I like it a lot. Okay. So next up is, uh, is Skeletron, of course. So we're going to have to wait for a, a brand new night. But while we're doing that, let's zoom it on in. What do we get then? So opening this up, Count Echo's treasure bag. We got the Batwing, which is a yo-yo, which is uh, pretty amazing, especially if you hold it there. It looks like a bat and also a spider. We got some Dracula fangs, which is part of the thrower class. And we got the Vampire's Catalyst. It's a transformation and allows you to transform into a bat. I saw a few of you comment yesterday about why didn't I use the uh, the B mount. What's what's with all the love for the B mount? The last time I spoke to anybody about the B mount, they hated it. I hate it. Do you guys think the B mount's good? I disagree. It's not good. It's really bad. <laughs> I don't know why they have it. It. Am I thinking of the right thing? It's a mount that needs to be recharged. Nobody wants that. I'd rather just fly. Okay, so I did a little bit of googling for um, for the Trapper. So it was in fact added in the most recent update. And you need to make darts. And there are a few different types of darts. And here's what it does. It fires out actual darts like a dart trap. So I think it's really cool. Yeah, cool. Sick. All right. Well, let me zoom it on out. Thank you very much. So I guess we'll be waiting for nighttime then. And then we've got Skeletron. Skeletron is going to be considerably harder now that we've added Revengeance mode. You guys wait. It's not going to be a breeze. So I've had these plants in my inventory for days now. I was meant to do this ages ago, but obviously the other day we got ourselves some dye. And we changed from a white wizard to a silver wizard. Very adventurous, I know. But I did want to keep basically getting new dyes and checking it out because I feel like it's kind of a relic of the past for me. I remember when Terraria 1.3 came out, it was huge to make sure you always traded in your strange plants. But I think you can forget certain stuff like that. So Aquite dye, that's modded, right? Am I wrong in thinking that? That's got to be modded, hasn't it? Let's have a little look at it without the, uh, the weapon in the hand. And I would say it's kind of cool. I actually really like it in the in the blue. So let me put that back. Let's have a little look at the uh, the other two. So we got Mirage and Purple Ooze. That one looks really cool. I really like it. I often don't like this one because uh, it makes a lot of stuff look pretty goofy. But I feel like when you're a mage, you kind of want a special effect like that. I really like it. I think it's cool. The best part is, after we've done Skeletron, we'll actually remove the uh, Jungle Rose from our hair. Because as much as I like a Jungle Rose, and I'm going to be real here, it is pretty cool. I would rather have a familiar wig. And obviously, if we kill Skeletron, we'll get the cloth ear, and we'll get that wig. I almost forgot to give you guys a bit of an update about Animal Crossing. So here is your daily Animal Crossing segment of the episode. I really like it. So last night I decided I'm going to stay up until midnight. I already had it downloaded and I was ready to go. A few minutes before midnight, I was like, actually, do you know what? I'm very tired and I want to make sure that I'm all ready for tomorrow. So I went to bed and it really was counterproductive. Like I went to bed about five minutes before midnight, but I woke up this morning, I booted it up and I was having a really ace time. I'm one of these people that if I play Animal Crossing, I don't cheat the time system. Not like there's anything wrong with that. I just like to get my money's worth. So I want to play the game over a couple of weeks. 
But it's funny because Animal Crossing is genuinely designed to keep you addicted. It's always, hey, something amazing's gonna happen. Come back tomorrow. And it got me thinking about what are some of the most addictive games out there? Like, what have you played that's really addictive? So I did want to pass that comment on to you for today. What would you say is the most addictive game you've been hooked on? Of course, Terraria, super addictive, always. Especially with RNG, it's like, you know what? You want that rare item? Play another hour. Go on, we, we might give you it. That really extended the, uh, the playtime of Terraria by adding really high RNG. I've just walked this whole way, and it's not even my dungeon site. Wow. So, something I didn't really think about, but we actually do have kind of a small arena already set up because it's right next to the artificial crimson that we made. And that's good because I came here quite late. I'm actually going to take this now. I did bring a shine potion and a night owl. I knew it'd be dark. I'm pretty sure the, the crimson actually makes it darker in general though, so... I apologize. You may want to crank up your brightness if you're on a mobile device. But let me just fill this out real quick and we'll have a nice little arena to do this fight with. So I am genuinely curious if Revengeance Mode will make as big of an impact as I am thinking. It's been so long since I've done Revengeance Mode, it really is hard to, uh, to actually remember what it's exactly like. I'm fairly certain Calamity Season 5 had Revengeance Mode. So, if that's the case, that series is over a year old. And I know I haven't played it since then, because I've mostly been playing on Expert Mode. But then again, it's not going to compare to Masochist Mode Skeletron. The boss that could one-hit you right at the very end... God, I, I still have uh, flashbacks about that. My God, was that an annoying fight. But not in a bad way. It was a, a fun fight, but still... Masochist mode. God damn. Okay, so I want to try and use the uh, the flaming staff. I think this thing is amazing, especially if you can get a boss that, that essentially walks into it, right? So for this fight, I'm going to use a magic power potion. This is my first time using magic power since the series started, so I don't know if it's going to make a difference. Oh, I didn't take my buffs. <laughs> I was like, my mana's regening very slowly, but... It's probably because I'm being overwhelmed. No, it's just because I simply didn't have the buff. So I feel slow. I'm noticing that straight off the bat. I feel like I'm constantly going to run into it. I don't know if the boss is faster or I'm just slower. It does feel a little different. It does. I don't know what it is that's different, but something's different. I think you guys that know Calamity way more than I will ever know Calamity could probably tell me what's... Uh, New in Revengeance mode. But you guys don't have to worry about it. If you can't be bothered to type it out, I'll give it a Google later. Alright, so... Ooh! Well, that's new. So what did it do then? So I imagine, by the way, this will be different than... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. So we have 25 seconds left to heal. So I'm assuming... Yeah, we're gonna die. Wow. All right, get the death cat already, boys, because it's on. All right, so we just failed to Skeletron, so it's now time to make some of the small little upgrades that I wouldn't usually make in expert mode. I mean, you all know me. I'm kind of notorious for not bothering with, like, a campfire or a heart lantern, but here it's going to be important. So the first thing I'm going to make is a couple of campfires, and I'm just going to make these out of my inventory because... That's apparently where you make them. Uh, I'll also make a heart lantern. I don't know how many of these I can make. All right, so I can make two of them. So I'll take that. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to take my solidifier and I'm going to dump it inside of here. Which one do we remove? I'll remove the, uh, the heavy workbench for now. See you later, buddy. And we're going to make a red balloon. Actually, first we're going to make a string. Is that right? Yeah, cool. White string, all right. And then we'll make the red balloon. Oh, I need gel. <laughs> Why am I forgetting this crafting recipe? It's literally right next to me. <laughs> it's not like I've just not made this in forever. All right. Red balloon. Got ya. Okay, so we're going to make a blizzard in a bottle. I'm going to see what the crafting recipe is because I don't actually know. All right, so it's four feathers 
and a bottle and some snow. All right, so I've got my four feathers. So what we'll do is we'll head back home and deposit. Wait, let me keep these. <laughs> Let's deposit all of that. We don't need these. I've noticed, by the way, that these escape rockets, they don't actually um, get used up. I'm meant to have just eight of them, but I've probably used them like 10 times now. They're really good, so I'm kind of glad. Right, blizzard in a bottle. We'll craft that, and then we'll craft that. Thank you very much. I think this is going to make a, uh, a huge difference for me. I tell you what, looking at this now, we can um, maybe upgrade these boots as well. Uh, let's have a little look at that, because I don't know if I've got the... Uh, all of the accessories. You need the acklet and the anklet or whatever. So, spectre boots. No. Wait, what's the... Oh, it's the lightning boots, isn't it? Lightning boots. Okay, I'm missing the uh, the aglet. So, can I make an aglet? Hey, look at that. That's why I love mods. <laughs> I love the convenience of it all. Alright, lightning boots. Bam. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try not waste too much money here, but I'm going to start reforging some of these, you know, like, it could just be a bit better. So I've got, you know, a couple of minutes to wait until Skeletron, but I thought I would have a little look in my dungeon to see, you know, what have I got? Is there anything good? And it's funny because we obviously limited ourselves to say, you know, no water bolt. I did make a fiery water bolt, but it's modded, so it doesn't count. But right here... Right at the very entrance of the dungeon is a water bolt. Like, how amazing is that? That the best mage weapon that you could probably get at this point in the game is right there by the door. Let's find out what modifier it has. None. Okay. Well, all right. All right. To be honest, I thought I was going to pull that up and it'd be godly, knowing the look of this world. But that's really cool, isn't it? Hey, I got a trash can. That's Danny DeVito, right? <laughs> I love it. Why not? Why not? But I'm going to be real with you. Danny DeVito, pretty great. But I do prefer my uh, my grumpy cat. <laughs> I was just like, well, I'm killing time until it's time for the dungeon. May as well just come here for a minute. And uh, I notice the alligators look a bit different, don't they? Man, I love the music here. So, so good. All right, I just heard the music change over. Benefit of wearing headphones. It's now nighttime. So hopefully our improvements make a bit of a difference. I feel like the balloon is going to make the most difference. But we'll see. You never know. All right, so let's get into this. Let me kill this zombie. And all right, here we go. Okay. Is this going to work? I already feel weirdly slow. I do. I feel like um, I'm sluggish. I don't know what it is. All right, so that's one arm removed. Let's see if we can get rid of the second one. And then now we just need to be uh, really careful with how we uh, maneuver around, basically. But obviously, it teleports. Ah, yeah, all right. I will admit, I completely forgot that, oh yeah, it's not as simple as, um, oh, it's just gonna be dead easy in the second phase now that that's out the way, no. We're having problems with the brand new teleportation. Okay, I do feel a lot better. My movement just feels so odd, and I don't know why. I'd love for uh, for somebody to explain it if there is something new. Do let me know with a comment down below. All right, we've got adrenaline. Oh, I don't know which button my adrenaline's mapped to. Oh, there you go. All right, that's made uh, the world of difference. <laughs> that's nice. I don't know if I, if I left that too late, because I know that adrenaline essentially punishes you, doesn't it, if you don't uh, use it fast enough. All right, so it's it's got hands again. So it's taken a, uh, a page out of uh, Masochist Mode's book, basically. Oh, do you know what it is? It's the um, it's the armor. The armor causes you to uh, to fall faster, and I'm so not used to it. I'm used to like a more floaty character, and I think I'm only really noticing it now because I'm actually relying on the character's uh, maneuverability. That's my assumption, anyway. That's that's what I'm predicting is uh, is going down. No, no, no. Oh, God, it's so hard to avoid. It really is. Okay. Right, that was a good teleport. That didn't uh, screw me over at all, so that was good. Okay. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to walk towards this uh, mana crystal. All right, we're so close. 
Oh my god, thank god. That was so hard. I don't know why that was so hard. I was having a miserable time through all of that. <laughs> that was bad. Alright, well I'm so glad it's done because I couldn't deal with uh, continuously fighting that. I do think it's that. I think it's this ability where it's called allows you to fall more quickly and disables fall damage. Maybe? I don't know. Sorry if I moaned too much during that. I felt like I did. <laughs> Alright, so let me dump this... Uh, I haven't really got space for it, but I could put it here. Nice. It looks amazing. So we got a little bit of a uh, lore, right? Skeletron. The curse is said to only infect the elderly. After they are inflicted, they become an immortal vessel for an ancient demon of the underworld. Place in your inventory to gain increased damage while in the dungeon. However, your max health is decreased due to Skeletron's curse. So obviously, I think this is an effect that kicks in when you're in the dungeon. That's a, a pretty interesting trade-off. I wonder what percentage it is compared to like what percentage here. So let's open this up. We got ourselves the Book of Schools. Ooh, I said that I uh, I wanted to try use this a little bit more actually. So I'll keep this around. But for now, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna do it. So that was a really fun episode. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad we're in revengeance mode now. And I think we're going to really notice that as we get further and further into the series. So within the next 24 hours, we should hit 250,000 subscribers. I feel like I've been talking about it for a while, but it's an incredible milestone. And you guys keep smashing that 3,000 like milestone as well. And I'm going to keep thanking you every day for it because I'm very grateful. Right, see you in the next one, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Peace.